My name is Hugo Alberto Zamorano, and I'm an artist, and that's what I do in the community. I do art. Voices Amplified is the arts and social justice initiative by Omaha Performing Arts um, that amplifies diverse cultures and marginalized groups. It was started in 2019, um, right around the time of the Black Lives Matter movement, the death of George Floyd, and all of that that happened to where the first season in 2021, we amplified black voices. And this season, we're amplifying black and Latinx voices to reach out further into the community. Um, one of the great things about Voices Amplified is that we are not just creating programming for people to come to the Holland Performing Arts Center or to the Orpheum. We are planning with the community versus four, and we're going out. Like today, we are at El Museo Latino, the only Latin American museum in the Midwest, which is a huge deal. So we're coming out here to make sure that as an organization or an institution, we are literally and actively being in the community and creating those relationships. So for the finale of Voices Amplifier, we are going to do a timeline or a, a history piece, a period piece, if you will, about North and South Omaha coming together, showing our triumphs, showing our strengths, but also showing our differences. And in that, we wanted to show that through visual art. Visual art was the number one idea to make sure that we showed more of versus last season. So we are thinking about having panels, some way having visual art as a backdrop for the musical numbers that you're going to see, for the dance numbers that you're going to see, so that you can see the art that came out of the community as a backdrop while you're watching the show go on. Hugo Zamorano was brought in not only as a community visual artist, but he's on our committee. Our committee is full of community members who are teachers, educators, and artists to kind of help us make sure at Omaha Performing Arts that we are driving the right direction with this program. So not only is he a committee member, but he's also on our creative team. We needed his input to make sure that we are truly giving the proper highlight to visual art in our city. So him being right here with us helps us create that gap. We are bridging that gap, but we're also making sure that we are doing it appropriately and authentically. I use uh, many painting, so painting with spray paint, as we're doing back here, markers, uh, just regular acrylic, oils. Um, nice. I do a little bit of everything, kind of sort of multidisciplinary. <laughs> well, we're doing, uh, we're, there's gonna be a performance in June, so we're kind of sort of building up to, for me to create the set design, pretty much stage design, the backdrop. And uh, so we're doing a ser somewhat a series of uh, somewhat workshops, I would say, to kind of get ideas and get inspiration for what, what that's gonna look like. So the workshop where kind of like the, the grand idea, the grand, uh, yeah, the bigger, bigger idea is kind of, it was um, race and identity, right? It's kind of what we were talking about. Uh, I did, because we were gonna have kids, I didn't necessarily know how to go about that. So I kind of just like, I listened to the song Lockdown by and Anderson by Anderson Peck. And um, I know something in the song just gave me an idea, like I'm just gonna go a step maybe deeper past race and identity and go down to like a more basic thing. And I wanted a way to kind of tie everyone and everything, like North and, North and South Omaha, all of Omaha, Latinx and black people. So at, I think at its core is there's, there's the hustle and then the struggle, right? And uh, I, I don't know if people mess around, but like, oh, the struggle's real, the struggle's real. Like, yeah, the struggle's real, but the hustle is too, because we have to keep moving and, we, and we're and we gonna have struggle no matter what. And we always have to hustle to, to do better, to improve. And I think that, that's kind of what, that's why, I, that's kind of how I ended up there. I was writing down words. I was down, writing down like, all right, um, like what's diverse? So maybe I use the word multiply and then multi. Maybe I was like, oh, maybe I should write the word multi or, or universal, maybe uni. And then one of the markers I brought, they're called uni, they're, they're named uni, uni Pasco markers. Yeah, so yeah. it was a cool tie in. Um, but I, like, I don't know, just something I think I li just listened to a song, I like scratched it. I'm like, I kind of feel like maybe struggle and, and uh, hustle is a little more universal in that sense. I did think about hustle because, you know, there's like there is a negative connotation because you get hustled out of something. And then, I mean, you know, different words for hustling. But I think because of the context that we're in and kind of just like for me, myself, like doing graffiti, that's illegal. Um, 
friends, you know, crowds that I was hanging out not, wasn't always the best. So like we come out of somewhat like darkness and, and I think within that darkness, you always try to find like the light. And I think that's kind of where graffiti is also from because you take a lot, of, like at least for me, it took a lot of darkness and I, and I put it out like just doing graffiti and maybe it wasn't the best way to do it, but that was the way that I knew and it was artistic and it, you know, it, it helped me a lot. So I was trying to find that, you know, that how to flip that, that darkness or that sadness or that struggle into some positive. And then you know, hustle is a positive word, but it can also be negative, but positive for the most part, I feel, especially because of pop culture and because hip hop is part of pop culture now, so. A community portrait is an opportunity for um, members of the community, no matter the age, no matter where they're coming from, are coming together to all create a piece depending on where it's at. So like behind me, we have the word hustle. Young students from different age groups came out to all do this together and it'll be put out in the community. I think it's an opportunity for us to show what collaboration looks like, um, not knowing each other, but we're all coming together on a project to just create art. So it was the vision of the committee to make sure that we showed the community. So kind of going back to the idea of the community portrait, um, showing kids being active in art. We want to make sure that they are having the access to art and art opportunities. So we didn't know if it was going to be kids or adults because students, there's no age to students, but we are so happy that we had a lot more youth. So to see them, a lot of them did it for the first time, but they did a fantastic job and their expression, most artists in Twilight Tharp says that an artist is just the inner child. So why not have children actually color away <laughs> with spray paint? So I think to show them and showcase them doing that sh brings life to the experience altogether and makes it more enjoyable. My name is Zally. Okay, what's your name? Yeah, Jerry. And how old are you? I'm seven. And what about you? I'm seven. You're both seven, awesome. Can you tell us what you did today? Yeah. We spray paint. Hmm? We spray painted. You spray painted? Okay. And what did you like about spray painting? Um, I like writing words. You like writing the words? So, how did painting these big words, how did it make you feel today? They make me feel happy. Happy? Good. What about you? Um, they make me feel um, good. Good? And if you could paint any word that you want in any color, what word would you paint? I'll paint. Uh, my name. Your name? What colors would you use? I'll use pink, purple, black. Ooh, she already knows. Yes, what about you? I would write my brother's name. Aw, what colors would you paint? Um, green, purple, black. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, ladies. My name is Alex Johnson. I'm 12 years old and I attend Norris Middle School. Today we, uh, we made murals and learned how to make those murals and what the words that we painted in meant. And yeah. Can you tell us what hustle means to you? Hustle is something that you gotta do in your everyday life. Nothing's free. You gotta work for every single thing you get and need and want. Cause that's just how life is. You don't, I kinda forgot what I was gonna say, but no, that's all right. Okay. It's all good, you're doing great. How did you find out about this event today? Being in uh, a youth group called Bluebirds that they help us um, get better understanding of the long run and how to deal with certain things in life. Uh, I felt, I felt happy. I, I'm glad to be here. And my favorite thing was just doing, the, just, just looking at it and painting myself. Simply just be, just by the writing on the wall. I mean, it, you see, you go, you go out to the street and you see like a tag or you see someone painting something, you see a, a image of something. Oh, you see a sticker, like a political image. Uh, that's graffiti too, it's, because it's illegal. Um, so it, it, has, it has the power to just influence you just by seeing a word. You think of something and that kind of, you know, I think either changes your mood, it can make you upset. A lot of people make them upset because it's illegal and it's graffiti. Um, but I think it has that power in that sense. And I think for like South Omaha specifically, um, because it's there's more graffiti in South Omaha, I, f I, f I want to say, and at least looking at police reports, there's been more arrests in South Omaha of graffiti. Um, it's a lot of younger guys, younger kids, and I think that says something. If there's a lot of young people doing something, I think there's a 
there's a sort of a venue and an outlet there. And I know what's for me, it still is. And when I was in high school, when I was a kid, it was, still, it was a huge outlet. So I think it says that there's a necessity for more, um, for different art programs. Because there's a decent amount of art programs, but not, not everything fits everyone. And there's a lot of kids that they want to do graffiti lettering or they want to do like street art or stenciling. And there's not always that many programs geared towards it. It's all more just drawing and painting, which is awesome because I love doing it too. But there's different stuff. And I think like, with the, especially within this era, I mean, graffiti, contemporary graffiti now started around maybe like mid 60s up until now. And it's probably one of the strongest art movements in history, I would say that we can, that I can think of. I mean, it's global. It's not just US, it started in the US, like a lot of good things like hip hop and stuff, but it moved all over the world and it's just, it's all over the place, so I think it just has a power to change the atmosphere, the, the environment, spe especially like with gentrification and street art and, or art in general, kind of go hand in hand a lot lately. So with, graf with, like, with graffiti, because they supposedly, you know, it's five elements of hip hop, right? And they, they throw graffiti in one, which it is one, but graffiti, it really is kind of its own thing. It's not, it's not just within hip hop, it's like, it's within, I mean, even before hip, I mean, early 60s, you know, there was, there was disco. There's a lot of disco, punk, punk rock and rock. There's a lot, a lot of that. In Brazil, they have, uh, the style is called Pixacio. It's sort of a different style of writing, but that type of writing kind of derived from metal bands. Metal bands were going over and the lettering, they were kind of like, they adapted the lettering from, from different metal bands. So, um, I think the ties with the hip hop is just simply because you know, there's a lot of kids. It's 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 a subculture, and it's of a like a like a urban urban culture sort of. You know, it's bigger cities. So within all those bigger cities, there's graffiti and there's hip hop. You know, so there there's bound to be people that are doing graffiti and hip hop. There's bound to be doing a rock and hip hop, and 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 graffiti. So I think just by being around each other, really, um, historically, it's because of that because it was somewhat packaged. Hip hop was packaged to be able to you know, get more commercial power. It's not, not a bad thing, but it was, it was part of it. And I think that's good. And that really, I think, boosted graffiti, I think, to a, to a different level that, that it kind of is now. It was because the, the DJs were graffiti writers, the MCs were, you know, the people that were going to the club dancing, they were graffiti writers. Like, I mean, like Washington, at one point, everyone had a nickname and everyone was doing graffiti for, for a while, you know, and, go, and going go-go dancing. I'm at, at Juicer, J-U-I-X-E-R on Instagram. Uh, I have a website, but it's not up yet, so I need to get that running. Yes. Facebook, Hugo Zamorano, um, or Hugo A, or Alberto Zamorano. And um, email, Google, I guess. Ask somebody if they have my number, and <laughs> they'll probably give it to you. Awesome.